Hey coach, welcome. I'm glad you found us on YouTube. Let me know how I can help you. I've coached for 30 years, won a lot of championships. You can see behind Coach MBA guys. I am here to help. I started teachhoops.com to help coaches just like you through this great journey we call basketball coaching. It's got more resources and I think the best part is our community and our resources that we have. You'll get my personal email address. We can get on a phone call. Teachhoops.com is the answer for your coaching journey. Let me let me know how I can help you and enjoy the video. All right, coach, sideline out of bounds plays. Um, if if my if my world happens and we get rid of the jump ball, this is the way we'll start most basketball games. It's gonna be this is gonna be my mission over the next five years is to get rid of the jump ball at the beginning of the basketball game. But anyway, so let's talk side out of bounds play. What do you got for us? Yeah, so uh, like everything that I do, I want to make sure that we are constantly attacking out of baseline out of bounds, sideline out of bounds, our, our transition, whatever it is, we want to be putting pressure on the defense. So I got two plays here out of sideline out of bounds. You can use this, you could use this late in games as well, um, after timeout or, or in the game situation. But we'll start off in a box setup. Um, two is just going to start here in a box and we're just going to clear him out. Uh, four is going to set a down screen for three, and one is going to pass the ball into three. Now, as soon as that happens, one is sprinting on the pass. He is passing to three and sprinting off that and is immediately going to get a dribble handoff back from three. That's a hard – I've never – that's a hard thing to, to defend. It is. I have not seen that action a lot. Because, well, you see it in the NBA – in the NBA all the time yeah. there's almost this action in almost every end of the game situation just a simple down screen and it's simple action too offensively it's easy to teach defensively right. it's hard to guard that's why you know some of the most simple actions are the hardest to guard <laughs> right. um, but x1 here what does x1 do i mean if he's up on the ball i mean if he's back here that's fine if he's up on the ball they tend to turn their head and watch the pass and that <laughs> gives too. us just enough time to get a step or two on x1 so what happens here is now x5 sees this as soon as the pass is made he starts sprinting up to set a ball screen so one is going to make the pass get the dho back dribble handoff immediately and immediately come off this pick and roll so one's already at a disadvantage so what's x5 have to do x5 is going to have to help on that most likely right right so now we'll go into frame two here. You can see um, number four is going to come up and set a back screen. And this is more decoy action than anything. Um, the, four, the four setting the back screen is a decoy? Correct. Because you okay. kind of have, you got this hammer action over here. Yeah. But if one's coming off here, that's kind of a tough pass to make cross body. Right. Right. Unless you got down into like your Nash area and then could make that drift pass down here. Um, if that makes sense. Yep. Um, so that's more to occupy the defense. Five is just rolling, right? Right. And four is going to pop up after the back screen. Okay. So typically what we end up with is, is a couple things. We got number one, who's got four different passes that he can make. He can pass to two, depending right here. We can hit yep. five on the roll. We can hit number four on the replace. Three might be down here, might have stayed here. It depends because if X3 came in to help that, we will make that pass. So we gotta, we gotta read the tag man here on the weak side, right? Um, so it gives you four different options. But if we pass the ball back here to four and one's up here and four's got the ball, we got this high-low action to five, two. Uh, five okay. rolls, reverse spins, quick seal. So um, we can look for that. But we got four different options out of it. Okay, I love that one. Yeah. All right, and, and so that's out of a box set, even though that two's in the corner to start with. Yeah, well, he, yeah, start, yeah. he started, he started, started here there and, and then he pops. Okay. Correct. Yeah, okay. he started here and then he just popped out and, and starts in a box set. So um, here's the counter to that. Um, kind of similar action here, starting a box set. Uh, four is going to come off the, the down screen. We just put three here, so we switched positions. You can or you cannot do whatever you want to do here. Um, but we'll pass the ball to number four, five steps up to set a screen. The key thing here with three, once they set the down screen, is we want to clear him out. And we want to clear two out, too. So if you look at frame number two here, we got three and two with good spacing on the weak side. And instead of handing the ball off here to number one, we're going to set right. our man up. Instead of setting this off, we're going to fake it. 
and we're going to just drive. Oh, we're going like to fake that. the DHO. So that's the counter. Because remember, what did we have in our last play here? Where we had X1 turned his head, right? And right. has to come back and recover. X5 had, had to come up, and he's going to have to help now. So when we go back here, and you got X5 trying to help off and, and, and number four, that's going to open this wide open for that drive, that fake DHO. Um, and, and actually, you saw this. Uh, the Miami Heat just ran this in the NBA Finals. They did. And they Kelly Olynyk uh, ended up with a wide open lane on it. So, so what um, – do you, do you have counters for all your side out of bounds plays? Every one, yeah. So I could run, um, you know, four or five different things out of a box set up out of our sideline out of bounds play. And are you trying to get different looks on each one of your counters? How does that work? Yeah, it depends. I got I got counters or I got plays that uh, well, this is a perfect counter. So for right. example, if I ran the the Celtic, we call it Celtic. This is called Celtic Keep. If okay. I ran Celtic early in the game and then late in the game, I saw how they played the Celtic the first time we ran it. I might call Celtic Keep because I know that they're cheating this and that that's wide open for the next time we run it because they're going to have Celtic in their head. Right. And that's when we hit them with this. So how many how many counters do you have for a specific like Celtic thing. Do you have two or three or how for many? Sideline, for sideline out of bounds, I don't have as many, many counters for everything. I mean, I might have three or four. Okay, um, okay. But I, mean, I got like 60 different sideline out of bounds that we can pick from every okay. year and run that's in my library of things. Um, obviously, you know, high school or AAU, we don't run as many sideline out of bounds as late game NBA situations right. do. <laughs> right that's all they're doing for a living and you have your you want to do the the tip up tip off rule right i, would I would, love, yeah i would love to see us be able to advance the ball to half court late in the game like the oh done i done that should be that's 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 i don't even know why we don't do that like i, I should be able to call a timeout with 20 seconds to go and take it at half court and drop i agree i think it would make there'd be some more exciting endings it'd just it'd just be right a, honor you know right so. oh yeah i'll add that to my i'll add that to my petition it's like <laughs> i'll take a I, I think i'll get i think i get more support for that one than i did for getting rid of the jump ball like i think i think you're right I but i think I it just adds a whole nother level of strategy too I think oh it's a whole black. other level of strategy and it's like i think getting rid of the jump ball would cause strategy because all of a sudden i'm going to start with the ball there if i'm the visiting team i'm going to start with the ball what are you going to do that takes away my tip off plays coach oh it's tip off we all do i, I do gotta, you have tip off plays in your library yes we all I, I kid you not when i was in high school we started off the game we had a big center that was about six eight we started right. the game do nothing every game no, I when I had a good center, I'd start off with a tip-off play too. But um, okay, so where would they find? Okay, so th there's three different ways places they can find these out of bounds plays. Is that right? Correct. Yeah. So I have a baseline out of bounds playbook. I okay. have a sideline out of bounds playbook, and then I have a playbook that you can get everything all in one. That's got all of the baselines out of bounds and the sideline all out of bounds all within one. Okay, and I'll put all those down the show notes for the people that are listening, and I will also put it. Um, and I'll put the video so if people want to watch these. All right, perfect. Thanks, Coach. Thank you. Hey, Coach, I'm glad you enjoyed that video. Let me know how I can help you become a better basketball coach. Um, Teachhoops.com is one way that I can do that. Um, I have coached at every level, won lots of championships, lots of rings. Let me know how I can help you become a better basketball coach on and off the court. Um, so check out Teachhoops.com for that.